Hey, what's going on? This is Kelsey. I'm with Music Promotion PR, and today I have with me Christopher Vincent. Christopher, welcome. Hi, Kelsey. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so glad to be here, guys. No problem. We love to have you here. How are you? I'm doing extremely well. How are you? I'm doing well. <laughs> Thank you. <Yeah. laughs> Everything that's going on in the world right now, but I'm very happy to be here. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I like your setup. Are you in a studio? Thank you. Yes. So currently I am at Vocal Inc. Uh, my boy, Tim Campbell, is here. He is a very well-known uh, engineer, producer here in the historical district of Hagerstown. And he, he, he goes a little bit further than that. He's known a lot further than that as well. Uh, okay. But we are here in the people's studio. He's just uh, enlisted this side of the studio. So he has this side of the studio and he has another studio over there. Uh, cool. It's absolutely beautiful. I recommend his studio to anyone. Um, Tim is a genius. Uh, so yes, everybody look him up, hit him up. This is some talent here. <laughs> uh, perfect. <laughs> and how often do you and Tim record together? So uh, right now, uh, Tim and I have collaborated on um, a few projects already, uh, but we do have, we are in talks of working on some projects together. Um, we have laid down some musical pieces, but we haven't physically laid anything down as of yet. Uh, the main goal for me right now, because I also work <clears throat> heavily with Sean Singh of Too Hot Too Heavy out of West Virginia. Mm -hmm. uh, Sean is the main engineer on my Nostalgic Moments EP project that is getting ready to be released. Um, so after the completion of this EP, which is really rooted in hip hop, R&B with a little pop, bit of pop, mm -hmm. worldly hip hop, I guess. And I say that in the sense where it's just a bit of everything all across the world, okay. um, different bits of genres and countries and so forth. But I really um, grew up so much listening to hip hop, pop, country, rock, just everything. So I really, we have a, a, a common love for that more rock sound. Um, there's some things that I wanna work on with Tim that we're going to do. Uh, but after this project's out and then pieces of music that I begin to work on, I absolutely will be incorporating um, Tim in that. However, for everyone that does know, I also did do a yummy cover by Justin Bieber. We didn't release the entire project, um, but we do have snippets of it available on my Instagram page on uh, social media. So Tim uh, did all the mixing of the vocals on that. So love it. Uh, love it Sean, uh, but Tim for now, we did everything. <laughs> I had to share this as playbook, yes, so yeah. <laughs> gotcha, sorry, you were about to take a drink before I asked you, so go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> A little parched, thank you. Yeah, because uh, you did talk about your nostalgic EP too. Okay, cool, you got your drink. Yeah, I cool. feel like this is gonna be a good explanation. I wanna hear more about nostalgic moments. What does that mean? So nostalgic moments, um, so I'm kind of a very uh, introverted person. And I sometimes when I'm in a conversation with people, my friends are hanging out with them, I kind of zone out from time to time because I get lost in my thoughts. Me too. Um, yeah, <laughs> like I just, <laughs> to deviate from the question but i just did it this weekend my friends were talking and i was like they divided teams and i was like so when are we picking teams and everybody was like we just did and i was like oh. I just, a nostalgic moment to me is um i think it's like kind of when you're somewhere or you're doing something and you just something resonates with you it just really sticks out to you um or when you think back on something it's just a very uh poignant moment in your life that holds some type of nostalgic correlation, if you will. Uh, so for me, uh, when I was writing and picking music, when I listen to music, it has to hit me some type of way and it kind of correlates an emotion to me. Uh, and then I think of a moment in my life and that's kind of where the creative writing comes from. So um, nostalgic moments are just pivotal moments in your life or just whether it be love, whether it be anger, whether it be um, being scared, something, it's just a moment that's triggered. It's a nostalgic moment of some sort in your life. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. Is that your usual songwriting process? Like you focus on these moments in your life and then just go from there? So I, <clears throat> for me, what it is, I listen to, I find productions and I listen to productions for hours and a production that speaks out to me and then I hear a melody and I start coming up with a melody. And then once I get my melody, then I start sticking lyrics to it. And then before I know it, 
my spirit has kind of given me the direction of where this song is okay. going. <laughs> so that's how I've done it so far. I am evolving. Um, at first, I didn't think that I could write music. That's what I was doing covers as first as well. Uh, and then reaching out to people. And then when I was mm -hmm. going into the studio with Sean, uh, I, everybody was writing their music. And I was just like, I can do this. If I can come up with the melody and then send it to somebody and then ask them to help me, I can come up with the lyrics as well. So I just started yeah. doing it that way. And we did vibe and just kind of everything else. So everything that's on my EP, I wrote. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey, what was that breakthrough moment like? Because there are a lot of artists who only do covers. They're unsure of themselves when they're writing. When did it hit you that I can do this? I can write my own. Um, I want to say probably was it vibe? Bye. I know we're going back in time a little bit. I know, I'm sorry. I was thinking well, vibe. When I put out Vibe, which was my first song, which I listen to it now, I'm like, wow, it's so amateur-esque oh. for me, because I hear how I evolved and I hear all the different dynamics and things that I've learned. But um, I, I have to say probably when I was writing a line, mm -hmm. uh, when I wrote a line, I really realized I was like, okay, I can do this. When we were putting together stacks and I was doing layers, um, and just going back and touching up. And I realized it doesn't have to be perfect the first session or the second or the third or the fourth session. Just keep coming back and perfecting it. Um, and then after I realized that it, I just work on it until it feels good. Um, mm -hmm. That's my, that just works for me. It may not work for anybody else, but that just works for me. And I won't release anything until I've listened to it at least a million times and edited it like that, that you know, same amount, but. Mm -hmm. I can't say, I don't want to say until I knew because I don't want to sound arrogant. I just knew that okay. I became more confident uh, when I was working on a line that I could write my music. I didn't have to rely on someone to write the song for me. Gotcha. Okay. And going back to genre, you said you're leaning more towards the hip hop, the R&B. Have you ever considered anything else or is you knew that you were going to go into this area? I've considered everything. I kind of, I want to do everything, but I know that I, in my mind, that I had to kind of isolate a sound first before I could just start doing a little bit of this, a little bit, because people were, what are you doing? You know, because I first came out, did the covers and people were like, it's really good. I did the Don't, um, Don't Let Me Down cover by the Chainsmokers mm -hmm. and everyone loves it, people loved it. And, you know, some people are like, well, when are you going to do hip hop? When are you going to do R&B? This is so pop. I can't, you know, everyone has an opinion, which is fine because I take it in and I kind of understand and, and take that in and um, allocate that to how I am going to move forward with creating music. But um, I don't, you know, I just started off doing hip hop R&B because I think that that's what I've listened to the most growing up. Uh, and then the artist R&B singers that I've listened to in my life are majority of my life those are the inspirations uh, that lead to the direction and what my ear pulls to as far as and what I want to create too. So I don't know, Kelsey, it's just, I love hip hop R&B, but I love everything. So mm -hmm. hip hop R&B is exactly, I do apologize. No worries. Where I have started and um, I would like to incorporate a little bit of rock jazz country. Um, oh, all right. Know, there's just so many different things I think you can influence. You could do a hip hop song, you can have a bit of rock in it. You can have some electronic sounds in it. You can have it very synthesized. It just gives you the ability to do everything, so. <laughs> gotcha. So you were mentioning some of those artists that you grew up listening to. Um, are there any particular inspirations that have stood out to you and kind of helped you create your sound? Yes, um, <clears throat> definitely. One I would have to say would be Brandy. Um, I absolutely love Brandy because she does. She is a female R&B singer and she does have a lower tone. Uh, but I think spirituality, it's her delivery as far as in, um, the insight that her spirit brings her to her runs and her ad libs. Um, I think when I listen from a very young age to like uh, Whitney Houston and Joe and Luther Vandross, it's just something about being able to sing the track and then uh, in an intuitive manner, just be able to come up with the run or um, a stack or a layer of an ad lib of something that really um, adds on to that song. And that's what makes the song so powerful. Uh, but I would say uh, Joe, 
Mariah Carey, Whitney Houston, uh, Tevin Campbell, love Tevin Campbell. Um, gosh, Usher, Mario, um, so many people, even Celine Dion. Uh, I love pa paparazzi. Yeah, and I even love opera. There's people that I've heard that I don't even know who they are, but I, I've heard them. And, you know, one of the things I've learned is just my music, they call it the music box, the sound box. You hear different things and your mind takes them in. And we utilize those in our singing. Mm -hmm. um, so. All right. And through all those artists, too, is there a specific one that you've focused on altogether? Like you said, Whitney Houston, you said Usher. Is there one out of all of those that you would love to collaborate with at some point? Oh my gosh, I would love to collaborate with Brandy. I would love to collaborate with I would love Brandy. I would love to do something with Usher. I love Tory Lanes. Okay. I I like anybody. I love anybody that really is able to do a smooth R&B banger, like something that is just Bruno Mars, wow. you know, um, he said, oh my God, this music. The Weeknd, like The Weeknd just gets in this very vibey, trancey, just like dope. Like I, when I first heard Blinding Lights, I think I've listened to that like a hundred times over and over and over and over again. It's just something about the different artists that are really able to tap in um, and just really get lost in the zone and just create something just really far out and, and sick and insane. <laughs> <laughs> I but, hear that. I mean, so there's a lot of people like I love, I just hip hop, r and I would love to do something with Jay-Z. Love, I, so I can sit here and say this, but I don't necessarily ever, I don't want to say that it could never happen, but I feel like, yes, I would love to do something with Jay-Z. I would love to do something with Mario. I would love to do something with Beyonce, you know what I'm Ooh. saying? Just, yeah. <sighs> a guy can wish, right? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Hey, you have to shoot high. It's what's in, It'll keep you going. Yes, yes, exactly. Shoot high, you never know. They may hear, they may like something that I do one day and they might want to say, hey, let me get on a track with Chris or put Chris on a track. Let me sing background. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Hey, whatever you can do, honestly. You, right? Let me just hum a little bit of this <laughs> As long as you're around them, oh my gosh, just to be in the same room, can't imagine. Yeah. And the knowledge, you know, the energy, I just think that those would be those experiences where you could really learn from them. I love the voice. Anyway, so I don't want to talk too much about anything like that, but I feel like those experiences when you can have one-on-one -on -one ability with a coach or someone that's in the industry that knows so much, you can just soak up so much knowledge from them. So, um, and that's how I've learned, you know, I've not ever really, Kelsey, um, I took voice lessons when I was younger and I took clarinets and piano things, but I never went to school to learn the art of music. I just sat in my room and listened and studied and practiced mm -hmm. and mimicked. And it wasn't until I just took Stevie Mackey's uh, Learn Monthly Vocal Lessons. And Stevie Mackey has been a wonderful resource. He's been so supportive. He showed me love on Instagram. Um, so his classes really gave me the knowledge about the breathing technique and taking care of my voice and practicing every day and mimicking and the sound box and all of these things. So that's why I was so happy with being able to complete the project because I had just finished those classes. So I'm just really um, ready to share with everyone my craft as I continue to hone it to be better. Okay. Mm -hmm. So other than Stevie, who you took classes with, are there any artists who you've met and they gave you any good advice or any inspiration? So, <laughs> so there are, okay, yes. I don't even, can we talk about these things? Because I feel like if I have any communication with an artist. That's is it entirely up to you. Just, you don't have to name names. Just say like something that they told you that really stood out to you. Yes. Uh, to just take my time with making music and don't ever rush and release it when it truly feels right. If I have that, I do have someone that I am getting ready to work with that is very supportive um, of my artistry. And I was kind of trying to rush the project, but I was like, no, I don't want to rush it because I just, it has to be right. This is my first mm -hmm. EP. 
And I was, I just said, I, it has to be right. Cause I don't want to put it out and then listen to the song a month later and be like, I should have did that. That's the worst feeling, the yeah. worst. So, but they said, uh, yo, I'm here for you when you're ready, let's move. And so I'm just with the out, the EP is almost done. So there is somebody that I don't want to say yet. Cause I promise not promise, but I always just try to keep things a little bit private until Definitely. it's complete. I keep those things, um, to myself because it is a private kind of moment situation um, until it's out there with everyone. So it's fully manifested. Okay. No, I understand that. Matter of fact, when you talked about too, releasing that music when it's really ready, is that something that you want your learners or listeners, sorry, to take away from that other than any other messages? Yes, I, um, I, I want them to know that I take the time to really make my music the best that it possibly can be. Uh, and that I want them to hear that emotion in the music and I want them to get lost within it. Um, and I want them to be able to identify with it. That's all. So I want them to hear and know that, okay, Chris's music is coming out. <laughs> it's gonna be the most amazing thing, but like, we know we're getting a good project. We know that he, his music is real and that it's something that we would be will be able to identify with or it's, we know that when chris's album comes out let's just spend our money <laughs> <laughs> and download it because he knows he's giving us a good project so i just really want that not that respect i hate to see respect i just want people to just give my music the chance a chance you know okay no i love that actually talking about your current music too i saw that this year released uh, Paradise, the remix, and Flex. Yes. Do you want to talk yes. a little bit about the releases? So Flex uh, was the first song. Uh, well, that's the first song was released prior to Paradise. So I did Flex, which is a follow up to Align, because uh, a lot of the club promoters that I had been meeting in DC uh, lost across the last couple of years uh, when we were doing promotions and things of that nature had said that they wanted me to put out an up tempo song. Mm -hmm. It took me a while to find the right production um, that I wanted to write to. So when I wrote Flex, um, it was just supposed to be a real, just a, a party kind of club banger. I got my boy Richie Rico on it from Puerto Rico, uh, and he spits in uh, Spanish. His oh. bars, his, yeah, all right, um, with a little bit of English. Um, so I love again Latin music. I love Latin music. Some of my closest friends are. The, Dominican, they're from the Dominican Republic. So, um, and I love Latin food. <laughs> Who doesn't? Yeah, so we came in and vibed out. Sean Singh was like, you need to work with Rico. And I was like, I reached out to him. So actually we were supposed to be doing the performance of Flex opening up for Castro Magico, uh, who is an international reggaeton uh, rapper and singer. And that was supposed to be at March at Club Aura in West Virginia. It was a sold out crowd. Uh, we were going to be one of the opening sets of artists that were going to be opening. Uh, but of course, because of coronavirus, it got canceled. But we're still, that's on the burner. Uh, but now we have even more music to perform when everything is up and ready. Um, and then also Flex will be on the Nostalgic Moments EP, but it has been uh, reimagined. Um, so we have updated. Okay. Yeah. So I want anything that I, we put Flex and Align on the EP. But we went back and remastered and retouched up and added some extra layers and paradise so paradise was actually uh, a song written the production was written created by sean Singh, too hot too heavy mm -hmm. and he initially released the song with nak leon and when he was working on it i was working on a line and sean was playing it for me and i was like why where's my beat like this can i get a beat where's my <laughs> nak leon has this right so i was when he was releasing i was like in my mind, I was like, I'm going to get on the song. Don't you worry. At some point, I was okay. like, this is my project, and I'm going to wheel it right back around. And get on this track. You better be. So um, I was like, Sean, I really. So after he released it, you know, with Nakleon, I was like, I want to get into the studio with Nakleon. So uh, Nakleon goes back and forth between Canada. And um, so I reached out to him, and it was a little hard to get in contact with him. And he was like, let's just, we'll get together at some point. So I reached out and said, hey, talk to his management. Um, I said, I really want to do this song. Um, and they were like, just go for it. So I went in and the neck, I was actually just going to do the second verse again that mm -hmm. uh, 
Dion had already did, but they were like, why don't you just do your own verse? And I was like, I could, I don't know why I can't, but I was like, I just kind of, you know, wanted to do it in a format where I was just kind of redoing what you did with my take on it. And they were like, no. So <laughs> <laughs> bring something new to it. So I was like, right. so I wrote, I sat and I wrote, and then, you know, Kelsey, that actually, I lied. Paradise was really the moment where I was like, I can write this. I can write okay. this. Okay. And because I was sitting there and I was like, just write. Don't try to find the perfect words. You know, if today, this evening when I'm creating, if I only come up with five five words, fine. Pick it up again tomorrow, you know, in the evening or whatever. And I just started writing and I didn't, I realized it's best to just write from a very organic, real state. Um, and I talked about the first lyric I say, when I wake up in the morning, I first pray for peace and direction. It's, it's so survival of the fit, yeah. you know what I mean? The current state of the world, world in general, but especially oh, yeah. with everything that's going on. So I just felt just right, right. Everything is going to be perfect. And I look at some of the songs, like I love A. Marie. If you ever listen to A. Marie, um, I haven't. You write, you know, A. Marie. I don't. One, one thing. Oh. I'm Maybe if I heard the song, I would yeah, know. We've we'll got some huge, huge A. Marie. Um, oh my gosh. It's just one thing. Like, oh my gosh, she has so many songs. Anyway, I'll send it to you. <laughs> okay. You're going to kick yourself and you'll be like, oh, how did I not? But um, if you ever listen to her, like I love her most recent EP, 4 a.m. Mulholland, because she just had um, her son, her beautiful son. Uh, I think his name is. Anyway, Rowan, something like that. That's beautiful. Anyway, A. Marie is absolute amazing. But if you ever listen to the way she writes, she writes in this kind of um, ambiguous, um, slightly fairy tale. Um, I can't even describe it. It's just like, I don't have the perfect words, but it's the way she writes and it all makes sense. I, I just feel like it doesn't always have to be so perfectly all along because people get the vibe, they get the energy, they get that it's about a moment. Yeah. It's trying to um, emulate or put down on paper, so forth. So, sorry. No, I love your explanation. <laughs> Actually. Keep me on target. I'm sorry. I, I apologize. No, you're good. I was going to ask you, because we were kind of talking about your upcoming album. Is there a specific song on it that you love and you're super excited for everyone to hear other than all of them, but just your baby out of it? Yeah. Uh, gosh. So Gravity, which is the next single. I'm very, very, very excited about it's a little, it's a little dark <laughs> feeling. Oh, how so? Uh, the, the lyrical content. Uh, <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> more. But I, 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 I know she's like, come on, Chris, give it to me, give it to me. Uh, the lyrical content. There's got to be a story I there. Can that for right now, Kelsey. Okay. Can I do that for a minute right now? Because it's very fresh to me still. Okay. Still very fresh. The emotion, the feeling, gotcha. everything. So, um, but I'll tell you the concept. Gravity is about um, falling so hard to the point where you almost hit the ground and you do hit the ground, but you bounce back. Gravity pulled me back. Um, it's And it's also speaking spiritually um, about the universe, whatever you believe in. Mm -hmm. uh, just that whenever you get knocked down, get back up. Thankfully, gravity pulled me back up. And I've got my boy Remy on it. Remy was on my first single, um, Vibe. And I wanted to bring him back because it just shows where we've come from that first single that I released to where we are now. And I know that when Remy spits his bars, it just comes from a very real place. And he's had, excuse me, a lot of trials and tribulations in his life. Yeah. Uh, he's overcome them and he's still overcoming them. So I couldn't think of another person to have on this song except for Remy. Um, and then I want to say Resilient, which is an interlude. Uh, it's probably my favorite. Like I had to listen when we were finishing it. I want to say like last month I was listening to it. And this is when I knew the power of music because it literally screwed me up the rest of the day. Yeah. And I was like, okay. 
this is I was like now I, when artists you hear people like I go into the studio and I couldn't finish that day or they started crying I didn't cry mm -hmm. in, in the booth or anything but when you when I listen back to the energy and the motion and what I knew went behind it I didn't you know your album's gonna put me in my feelings oh my <laughs> gosh I hear it already I don't want to I'm not it's not it's I just want people it's a vibe it's a mood it's a moment mm -hmm. you know like it's just the energy like even if my if you don't think that it's like the I don't know I'm the best vocalist in the world I think I am a great vocalist but there's you know there's always better but at least I want people to be able to get the energy from the music you know and everybody says I'm a perfectionist they say that I go like I Sean will say a song is done five sessions ago and I'm still like no just this little <laughs> That's just how I am, because even nobody else will hear it, but I'm like, no, I want to hear it. And that's just because I listened to the greats my entire life. You listen to a Michael Jackson record, you listen to a Mariah Carey record, you listen to a Whitney Houston record. It's perfection. It's perfect. You listen to a Braver. So I don't, I want my record to be in that vein, in that lane as much as possible. Okay. Oh, I respect that. Thank you. I love the authenticity and the originality that you have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. I do want to get on a different level. So um, regarding your streaming, actually. So whenever you have your music out on Apple Music or Spotify, do you think those platforms work well to help artists that are growing? Yeah, I do think so. I do have currently an independent contract with Bentley Records, and they do have uh, a series. I do a lot on my own, but they do have a lot of different um, uh, resources that I can use uh, internally with being a part of the label, uh, like different playlists that my music can be streamed on that has hundreds of thousands of followers. Mm -hmm. um, and they'll add me to their playlist. I, it, I do my, I execute all of my playlists through Spotify because uh, it's very user friendly. Um, and then I just have several different curators that curate the music. So I am receiving notifications through different social media outlets about my music, but finding my music through those outlets. Um, I direct everyone to them. And currently when I look at Spotify, I think, um, I think I have like, there's several thousands of monthly listeners right now. So mm -hmm. people, you know, I can't get to everyone. So it's getting me across the pond. It's getting me in Paris. It's getting me, you know, in Brazil, it's getting me played in Atlanta and California, all these different places. And mm -hmm. I like but it breaks everything down so I can see where the music's being played, who's listening to it, who's saving it, who's adding it to their playlist. So, uh, yes, it is very helpful. Oh, that is cool. All right. What other social platforms do you use? You kind of mentioned that for a minute. Um, are you on all the main ones like Instagram, TikTok? Yes. Yeah, so I don't have a TikTok. I have my Instagram, which is CBT underscore CB underscore. I have my Facebook, which is Christopher Vincent. Uh, I do have my YouTube channel, which is Christopher Vincent. Um, and then we also have um, a website. We will be doing my website soon. So I'll be having all, right. all the content on there as well. And then ultimately, I want to start doing performances um, once everything is opened up again. So that's just mm -hmm. kind of the next just getting the music streaming and just continuing to network and get it out there. I also have some other, um, I'm actually getting ready to do a campaign. Um, we're getting a photo shoot. It's not a campaign. Let me speak correctly. Okay. So I have a designer friend that's very well known. I guess I could talk about it right now because he doesn't care. So <laughs> Ron, Ron David, uh, I don't know. Do you watch Real Housewives of Potomac? I've heard of it, but I haven't seen it. So uh, one of my friends, DJ, uh, he's going to kill me. I call him Calvin. Calvin Scano. He has a series. <laughs> Tim's laughing at me. So he has a series. He has a um, organization called Verebus, uh, and it's for mental health awareness and the oh, black. Wow. So he has these different uh, fundraising events throughout the course of the year that I've been going to. And then Candice uh, from Potomac is a good friend of his. So she's always at his events and her husband, Chris. So I met um, Ron at one of these events and his clothing has been shown on the show and I reached out to him as I wear and I said, hey, I'm getting ready to do a photo shoot for my album cover, uh, another photo shoot. And I said, I'd really like to add in some of your pieces. I actually just had this conversation with him last night. So uh, we just finalized the agreement. So we will be doing um, a, 
a photo shoot uh, with some of his eyewear. Yeah, so I'm really oh, excited about that. Yeah. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I try not to talk about things until they're executed because uh, I'm mm -hmm. always doing working and I do have some other um, media outlets that I'll be doing some stories with as well for the release. But um, yeah, so I'm always just trying to, to do as many things as possible to, to build my brand. Um, but yeah, so th those are some of the things I'm working on uh, as far as some social media and content with the internet. Um, I TikTok, I could do, but I just, I haven't done it yet. Uh, but everything seems to be working, but heavily I use Instagram. Like I just, I love Instagram. Love it. Great platform. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> love Instagram. Oh my gosh. I know people are kind of iffy about it right now because of the updates, but it still helps. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's a little, um, you know, sometimes you have to be a, a little question about certain things, but ultimately, you know, it's really the way to display my music to really show um, kind of what I'm working on. I don't really post a lot. I only post pictures and when I get to release a single, but I do a lot of stories and my highlights. So that really kind of shows everyone a little bit more of my person and personality and what I do in my free time. Okay. The recording as well. So I do do a lot of um, live stuff in the studio or on photo shoots or um, just things with my friends, just trying to give them a little bit more insight to my life. I was about to ask you that. Like, do you utilize the live function for like mini concerts now too? So we are, I have not to answer your question. Okay. Uh, one of the things that we're going to be doing once we complete the EP Nostalgic Moments, um, I also work with the Meat Twins. They're my choreographers and my dancers. We are going to be filming a live unplugged style um, medley of a series of like four, four or five songs. Um, so that's what we're kind of mm -hmm. rehearsing right now. Um, and we are trying to nail down a location. So every artist that is on my EP um, will be also a part of this unplug. So yeah, so I'm really excited about okay. that. Yeah, and then I do want to take, I am going to begin to do more things um, live from home um, a little bit, or just things in general, a little bit more live, but mm -hmm. The main thing is to get the unplug complete upon completion and release of the EP. Uh, so that way we can put that on YouTube. We can put that on the website. We can put that on all the different social media things and people can really start to see me um, as a performer because they haven't seen, people want to see me perform, you know, and, and kind of like my delivery on stage. So that will be the next step. Gotcha. Have you performed on stage before? Not yet. Not yet. And the performance for Flex was supposed to be my first performance. And I know some people think that I'm like really ridiculous and it's not that I am ungrateful. Oh. And I have had offers to perform at clubs uh, in DC and it just wasn't right at the time. As far mm -hmm. as then I had covers and I had music that was coming out. But now that I have my EP, I have a solid project out that I'm very proud to perform. Uh, and, but I also, the vibe has to be right about the location. Definitely. So, and why, you know, this crowd was going to be a sold out crowd at a club. It was probably, it was going to be maybe, I think anywhere up to a thousand people. Castro Magico um, did a huge song, The Summer Before Last with Jennifer Lopez. I mean, he's huge, huge. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ricky, I got this offer through Richie Rico, who's featured on Flex, because he was like, do you want to perform this year? And I was like, okay, yeah. Because he had actually performed, uh, I think the month before at the time, opening up for Kevin Gates. Uh, Kevin Gates was there. Um, a club aura. So Wale was there uh, a few weeks before that. So they get some really good headlining artists there. And it's a big stage, a big crowd. And that's kind of the okay. energy and the vibe that I wanted to go for. All right. No, I, I wouldn't say ridiculous at all. I think that's awesome. Like you want to have everything put together before you go on a stage. Films, I'm going to have my team there. So it really has to make sense as an independent artist. I don't want to sound like I just only want to perform for a crowd of 200 or more, I'm not yeah. saying that I won't do that, but as an independent artist, everything costs me. So I just want to make sure when I have my team there to film everyone there, that it's overall going to be for um, a great outcome. Definitely. Marketing material, marketing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I totally understand that. Marketing material. <laughs> of course. You got to have things to post. Exactly. And um, going back to your album too, I know you said like you want to have things ready to go on stage. Do you have anything that you can kind of show us now before everything's released? I, I 
video actually. So okay. I will play everybody just a couple. So the next single is Gravity, uh, which we're hoping to get released. I went, the EP we're trying to have released on New Year's. That is a deadline. I mean, the goal. If not New Year's, it will be in January. It's just photo shoots and getting everything done. That's mm -hmm. where we're going. Gravity features Remy will be the next single, uh, which we'll be releasing in December. And ladies and gentlemen, I would like to give everybody a sneak peek of my next single, Gravity, produced by Distinct, no engineered by Sean Singh, and featuring Remy. Love it. gosh i was just getting into it <laughs> thank you uh, like yeah so do you like it i love it oh my gosh gravity fits it to a t like the way it was going it kind of made me feel like i was floating thank you, <laughs> thank you. you like it tim love it thank you yeah thank you so i um thank you yeah so it's all it's almost done that's like 91 percent done remy just laid his verse um, so he has to finish that. Uh, but yes, that is the next single. I am very excited about it. Um, and we're trying to think about whether or not we're going to do a treatment with it, uh, but it will definitely be something that we will do during the unplug. Uh, but it is definitely something I'm very proud about. I'm very excited for everybody to hear. It is very kind of um, ethereal, puts you in a trance, but it's to uplift you. It's just like, whenever you get knocked down, don't forget your swag. Just keep going, get back up. You know what I'm saying? Just like whatever you went through, whatever you may have lost, whatever, you know, tribulation, just keep going. And it's not always easy. Just don't give up. Keep going. That's it. And like that's what life is about. I love that. Thank you. Oh, we are so going to have to have you back the moment that EP is released. Thank you. And I'll be back. Don't you worry. <laughs> I'm here. Whenever you guys need me. I already told you that, so. Mm -hmm. No, we're <laughs> definitely having you back. I want to hear more about it, like once it's out and then we can react to it together. Thank you. Thank you, Kelsey, so much. Thank no you. problem. Do you want to plug your social media handles one more time? Yes. So everyone, you can find me on Instagram. My Instagram page is CVT underscore CV. You can find me on YouTube at Christopher Vincent. My Facebook page is Christopher Vincent, and we will be having a website up soon. Um, so that's where you guys can find me in the interim. All right. Well, Christopher, it has been amazing having you here and getting to know you. Thank you for playing some of your song for us, too. Absolutely. Very welcome. Thank you guys for taking the time. It means so much. I appreciate it. No problem. We'll see you again.